Um, visual style of sorts. I say of sorts because um, I don't uh, fret much about developing a distinct visual style. It's not something that I spend terribly, uh, a terrible large amount of time thinking about. But looking at my work uh, in preparation for this lecture, there, were, there was a certain section that uh, made me realize that there is something that keeps these things together. Uh, and I think it has to do with patterns, it has to do with vibrancy, vibrancy of color, uh, some sort of oscillation, and um, an interest in constructing images that read different from, um, from up close than uh, from afar. Uh, and it's funny, I mean, when I saw the poster uh, that uh, Jacob Cobb and Jessica and David designed, I mean, the first thing I thought was like, yeah, that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I like that a lot. Um, although I don't bake Wonder Bread, so. <laughs> uh, so, um, there, so, I think in this, these pieces here, and I'll go through a few of these in detail, I, I developed a structural methodology that kind of determines the visual results that is in a way surprising to me when it, when it happens. So instead of starting out with a visual idea, I start out with parameters and let them play out. Uh, so there's no thumbnail sketching, it's kind of it happens organically during the process. And uh, you know, here's a poster I designed quite a, some time ago for the Beale Center uh, for Art and Technology at UC Irvine. And um, there were three exhibitions for the season, 2006-2007, so I took three, uh, the three main images and um, overlaid them and it did develop a grid. And every third grid hole, so to say, shows the same image, so they all overlay. Uh, and that creates, in my mind, um, this kind of visual excitement and vibrancy. That's what I was after. But it also has the strange intermingling of these three, um, of these three uh, pieces that are going to be shown throughout the year. Um, here is uh, my entry for the annual Callard Jazz CD. And again, um, the, um, the, the letters are created out of, out of this chaos that from up close you can barely realize them, but as you walk, you know, look at it from further away, you, um, you kind of see the word college jazz, and thought that might conceptually relate to the music itself, that is um, uh, an, an accumulation of disparate elements coming together to create, to create unity. And that colorful wonderland kind of continues throughout uh, in the yeah. inside as well. Um, Although I, you know, I, I got pretty close, I think, but my, my classmate Andrew Zerzurni uh, took the top prize for, for that year. Um, and then here's a, a catalog that I designed during my last year at CalArts. And it's a fairly large, complicated project, and I'm just going to focus on one part uh, as it pertains to this, um, this visual style that I'm talking about. Uh, it's a catalog about urban uh, interventions by artists collectively. That I, that I edited and compiled, um, and these interventions make political, social, and ecological statements. Uh, but I ran into a dilemma that most of the documentation for these, um, for these pieces were um, quite poor. I might only find a little thumbnail, and I wanted to design a catalog that was vibrant and had a lot of full-color imagery, uh, and I couldn't do it with the images that I found. So what I did instead, I used um, some computer programming techniques uh, to translate the small raster images into these dramatic patterns. So I parsed the image, translated uh, raster imagery into vector lines that are the same color as the source image, and then I applied a bunch of illustrator filters to get different, different effects. And I, I solved a lot of issues that way. One, I could use full page illustrations, uh, that didn't look pixelated, and there was a certain visual excitement that was equal to the excitement of the actual artist interventions. And lastly, I also found a, you know, a visual, a unique, unique visual language for for the book. Um, this poster um, was achieved uh, similarly with um, computer code. Uh, it's it's a um, poster for. 
um, for a, a reading of Calic students. And um, I, at the time, I was taking a class called Picture Programming here at CalArts uh, with Andy Cobra, and we used this programming language called Python to manipulate image with code. And um, again, there's some <coughs> lucky circumstances that came together where a technique that I was interested in was conceptually appropriate for the project. So when I got this project, I got this email that said, hey, this is the image that we're thinking about. And the first <laughs> thought I had was like, oh, that's going to be difficult. Uh, uh, I can't use this image, um, so, but as is, obviously, uh, but I can maybe do something with it. So I got busy and wrote some, some code. And um, this is, you know, the code, which in itself, you know, it's Python code. Uh, uh, but what's more interesting to me is this, the, the actual, uh, what the code actually accomplishes. And I want to run through that. Uh, quickly. Uh, so basically it looks at, a ra it, it divides the image into columns and rows and looks at these sample points uh, for a, for the pixel color, right? So in this instance it might be red is 120, green is a 160, and blue is 200. And uh, that then gets translated into vector circles. So blue is the uh, highest number here, so the blue circle is bigger than the green circle, than the, the red circle. And uh, as uh, this program goes through the image, it might find different constellations. Um, so, you know, when red in the second example is really small, the circle is the smallest uh, it can be. And sometimes values are the same, so the circles start over print. And when this actually plays itself out, you can see there's this pattern that starts to emerge. And here's a, a detail of this poster where you can see um, these circles that have the color of the original image uh, starting to make uh, these kind of interesting patterns. And uh, on the left, I enjoy that they are kind of very um, structured, uh, and then they kind of go into this chaos on the right. And as you step away from the poster, the original image uh, kind of magically reappears. And I am uh, kind of cognizant of the idea that, you know, it's a filter. Someone could write a filter and you can do this with any, any, uh, any image you import. And, you know, we've seen these things. Um, but um, it was my own filter. I made my own filter. And I think at the time, too, um, it wasn't quite as well-trodden of a visual um, language as it might be today. And I remember that um, Martin Vineski at my review at the end of the year uh, said, this is my favorite poster of all year, of the whole year. <laughs> I was very, very happy. Um, all right, the last one I want to talk about is this um, poster for a Gorilla Girls lecture at USC in 2008. And they are a feminist artist collective, um, uh, you know, that laments or that, that deals with the fact um, that discri discrimination issues, discrimination issues in particular with women and they do provocative actions to call attention to these issues. The members are anonymous and use the gorilla masks when they actually appear in public. So uh, no one knows who they are and they also use it in their work. So and for my poster I wanted to use this image of a gorilla but I wanted to create a different visual aesthetic, a more colorful and less stark uh, aesthetic than is found in their work. And their work was mainly in the 80s and the 90s. Um, so again, I created a structural process that played itself out and uh, that created this, this illustration in the, in the end. And uh, it's somewhat a convoluted process. So I started first by creating these pattern swatches of overprinting uh, CMY colors. Uh, and then I created a grid of overlaying circles, some step and repeat, and just playing around until I found this grid on the right that seemed uh, you know, fine enough for me to use as a, as a template. Um, and I overlaid that grid over an image that I found online. And then I started to use the Life Paint Bucket tool that I just found out about because I was teaching a class, uh, uh, you know, an intro to Illustrator. And I was like, oh, this could be kind of uh, helpful, this tool. And I started painting in uh, areas um, guided by both the grid and the uh, underlying image. You can kind of see here that um, I could only do so many um, 
so many moves because I had it had to um, my shapes had to correspond to the underlying grid, and um, I certainly made a lot of judgments decisions along the way, like which pattern to use and you know, which how much to you know, which grid lines to use the circular grid lines, but um, there was also an inherent constraint in my decisions, uh, which was this grid, and then you know as it developed this. Um, illustration of the, of the gorilla uh, appeared um, and I, you know, it kind of surprised me and, and I think that's what I liked about the process. Um, the, the, the element of, of, of surprising myself. 